I'd like to talk a little bit uh, about um, our experience with Couchbase uh, at Viber and uh, how we started using it. The Viber service provides reliable text messaging. Uh, you get, when you send a message, you get an indication when the message was sent, when it was received by your, the, the recipient that you sent it to, and even when it was read. We have over 300 application servers, which uh, all of your clients are connected to them. In the second generation database architecture, we basically had our MongoDB, which had 150 servers. That was a master with two slaves. Uh, as I said, we wanted uh, uh, the data to be very robust, so we had three copies of the data. Redis, we had over 100 servers uh, in a master-slave configuration as well. So uh, over 250 servers, close to 300 even, uh, that we have today or had until recently. And in the third generation architecture, uh, with Couchbase, we basically divided it up to six different Couchbase clusters up to 50 nodes, uh, which were between three to 42 nodes each. Uh, in the nodes themselves, we have different buckets. Uh, each bucket can have, its diff uh, can have a different setting in terms of replication. So we have buckets with two replications, which means three copies of the data, two additional replications. Uh, one, zero, and even some with the only using memcache. We use XDCR and external backup for some of the data as well. The total number of servers that we need to replace the second generation architecture is between 100 and 122, 100 and 120 uh, servers. Now, if you do the math, uh, you can see that with less than half of the servers, we're able to do uh, increased performance uh, and get much better uh, uh, much better and uh, scalable architecture. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the numbers behind Viber. Viber is a very big service. Right now, we have hundreds of millions of active users using Viber all the time. Almost one million new users are added daily, so we have a very, very high growth here. In terms of throughput of our system, we, we transfer billions of messages and talking minutes every single month. So we have a lot of things going through our system all the time. Just to put things a little bit into perspective, uh, in a single day, we uh, handle more talking minutes, or several times more talking minutes than all of the Israeli cell phone providers together. So we're a pretty big service. Viber has enjoyed exponential growth since it, uh, since it started. You can see here the graph is the actual number of messages per month from 2011 until almost today, until the end of last year. You can see how, how fast our service is growing and uh, the throughput of our system. What drives Viber is basically the back end, of course, uh, and that's why we're here. <laughs> um, we had to make a back end which was able to deliver these billions of messages, talking minutes, at sub-second uh, low latencies for hundreds of millions of users. So how do we do that? At first, um, when Viber started, uh, we basically had our Viber clients connecting to our application servers and had an uh, in-memory database uh, which was built in-house. So that brings us to our second generation architecture. Um, we had our MongoDB cluster uh, over there. And we also used uh, another NoSQL uh, database called Redis, which is an in-memory database. Uh, it doesn't support charting, uh, has a master-slave configuration, and is mainly used for caching. At first, we did, in fact, use it as a caching database for Mongo. But as we grew, uh, we found that MongoDB couldn't uh, hold the throughput that we needed. Uh, so basically, what we did is that we created our own Redis charter. Uh, which would basically be able to distribute Redis uh, as a sharding database as well. And then uh, we had our sharding cache database uh, in Redis with Mongo. And again, the performance would not be as fast as we needed. Uh, and we actually had to put a separate Redis cluster uh, for some of the high throughput uh, needs that we had. Of course, it did have its problems, <laughs> obviously. Uh, first was the MongoDB, MongoDB performance. Um, as I said before, MongoDB was able to provide us more or less uh, tens of thousands of operations per second, uh, and our requirements were uh, in hundreds of thousands, even close to a million operations per second is what we have today. 
Another thing is that MongoDB didn't scale well with many application servers. We have hundreds of application servers. Uh, MongoDB has, uh, uh, each application server has several uh, worker threads that are each opening a connection to this same MongoDB cluster. The problem is that the uh, MongoDB opens a thread uh, with a stack and everything for each of these connections. Now if you count a few hundred application servers times a few tens of connections for each of them, that co comes to thousands of connections to this same cluster, and it's very wasteful in terms of memory and CPU. Uh, so that uh, started to become a problem when we reached very high numbers of application servers. Also, MongoDB seemed to have a problem with a very high number of records uh, in the database. Uh, when we hit uh, billions of records uh, in a single database, uh, it started to impede on the performance of MongoDB. Redis, uh, as I said, it was a very good, uh, fast database. The problem is that it doesn't have uh, built in any sharding, so we had to use our um, sharding software. Now, we're not a database company. Uh, so we built a nice software in the beginning, but uh, at the end, it's not a commercial grade uh, sharding software. Uh, it's not, it doesn't have good enough uh, robustness. It's not scalable enough. If we want to scale, for example, we have to double the amount of servers each time. We can't add a single node every time. Um, if there are any failures, it's, it doesn't recover very well, things like that. Um, also, uh, Redis, of course, is an in-memory database. It's not meant to be persistent. Uh, we want a reliable database that uh, is able to recover uh, from failures and uh, provide us uh, with uh, uh, proper data. So uh, it's not a very good practice to rely on an in-memory database as your main database. So that's why we had a few problems and looked for a new uh, third generation database architecture. We did a rather extensive evaluation of many NoSQL technologies and checked which was our, uh, the best for our use case. and. Uh, worked with all of the requirements that we put here. And as you can probably guess, we chose Couchbase. <laughs> okay, so this is the third generation architecture. Again, all on Amazon. We have our Viber clients connecting to our application servers, and we have our Couchbase clusters. Now, you might notice that I have uh, a few Couchbase clusters there. Um, what we did is we split them up to uh, six different couch-based clusters in this case, and not a single uh, big one. Next, we have the couch-based backup cluster, uh, which you can see there is uh, using XDCR technology, the couch-based uh, replication between clusters, in order to replicate the data. Now, not all data is replicated to our backup cluster, uh, only the uh, most uh, important or basic data that we have. Um, and uh, we basically did that in order to provide us an additional copy of the data, which is live, uh, because it's actually an active cluster. We don't actually have the application servers working with it, but if we have uh, a huge problem and everything goes down, we still have this uh, backup cluster uh, that we can always turn to uh, in case of uh, massive failures. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the actual servers that we use. We have over 300 application servers which uh, all of your clients are connected to them. In the second generation database architecture, we basically had our MongoDB, which had 150 servers. That was a master with two slaves. Uh, as I said, we wanted uh, uh, the data to be very robust, so we had three copies of the data. Redis, we had over 100 servers uh, in a master-slave configuration as well. So, uh, over 250 servers, close to 300 even, uh, that we have today or had until recently. And in the third generation architecture, uh, with Couchbase, we basically divided it up to six different Couchbase clusters, up to 50 nodes, uh, which were between three to 42 nodes each. Uh, in the nodes themselves, we have different buckets. Uh, each bucket can have, its diff uh, can have a different setting in terms of replication. So we have buckets with two replications, which means three copies of the data, two additional replications, uh, one, zero, and even some with the only using memcache. We use XDCR and external backup for some of the data as well. The total number of servers that we need to replace the second generation architecture is between 100 and 122, 100 and 120 uh, servers. Now, if you do the math, uh, you can see that with less than half of the servers, we're able to do uh, increased performance uh, and get much better, uh, uh, much better and uh, scalable architecture. 
Here I have a uh, sample, uh, one, of the, uh, one of our couch-based clusters uh, that we're using in actual production. Uh, I got it for, I think, two days ago, the screenshot. Um, this is a 10-node cluster. You can see here that this is a weekly view of the last uh, eight days in this case. And you can see there's a nice daily oscillation between, I think, 75,000 to 200,000 operations per second on this 10-node cluster. <laughs>